This is a Lab 2 Wireshark HTTP, and this is building on our previous lab, just a little bit more in depth here. So with this, we have gotten our feet wet with the Wireshark packet sniffer in the introductory lab, and this can be found in the playlist link below the like button. We're now ready to use the Wireshark to investigate protocols in operation. In this lab, we'll explore several aspects of the HTTP protocol, the basic get slash response interaction, HTTP message formats, retrieving large HTML files, retrieving HTML files with embedded objects and HTTP authentication and security. Before beginning our labs, we may want to review a specific section of our text. Now we have part one, which is the basic HTTP get response interaction. This part one has five questions. The other parts have multiple questions that will be in a separate video. And this is also in the playlist links below the like button. So part one is the basic HTTP get response interaction. We're going to begin our exploration of the HTTP by downloading a very simple HTML file. One very short and contains no embedded objects. We're going to do the following. So we have our browser started. We're using Google Chrome. We want to start the Wireshark packet sniffer. So we're going to open the Wireshark app. When you do so, something like this is going to come up. We are going to connect to the ethernet here. So if we do this, a lot of these things are going to come up. We can pull this over here and look at our actual lab right here. We can just move this over so we have more space as well. So we're going to start the web browser, which we've done. We're going to start our packet sniffer um, described in the laboratory, the previous one. We're not going to yet capture our packet. So in our display filter, which is up here, we're going to type in HTTP. That way we can filter the HTTP um, captures responses. We only want the HTTP protocols here. Next, we're going to copy this into our browser, or we can just middle click and open it. And then our browser should display this right here. After we do this, we can stop our packet capturing. And this is what we get. In here, we have our get by our get here, and we have our response. And we can see with the hypertext transfer protocol, which exactly these are. Um, this is going to say, congratulations, you've downloaded the file. And we can see that right here with a line based text data. We can see that only in the return, not the get because we don't get a return from the get only from the actual return. Do we get a return? And that makes sense. So from our browser, the gia.cs.umas s.edu web server and the response message from the server to our browser is what is in our get message. The packet contents window show details of the selected message. In our case, this is the HTTP OK message, which is highlighted in the packet listing window. Recall that since the HTTP message was carried inside a TCP segment, which was carried inside of an IP datagram, which was carried within our Ethernet frame, Wireshark displays the frame, the Ethernet IP, and the TCP packet information as well. We're going to want to minimize the amount of non-HTTP data displayed. We're only interested in HTTP data, and we'll be investigating each of these protocols later in other labs. So make sure the boxes to the far left of our frame, which are Ethernet IP and TCP information, have a plus side on the right-hand triangle, means that you're hidden undisplayed information. So if we have this plus right here, we probably are able to find some more information, but we're not going to look at that right now. By looking at the information we have here, we're going to answer the following questions. When you're answering our following questions, we should print out the get and response messages in our introductory Wireshark lab for an explanation of how to do this and indicate where the message we found the information that answers the following questions. So looking at this, we're going to go to the lab that I wrote out. So for the first one um, in my lab, which is linked below the like button, we have this picture, we have this picture, we have this, and those are 1.2, 1.1, and 1.3. So first, it's is your browser running HTTP version 1.0 or 1.1? Which version of the HTTP is the server running? So if we go up here, we can see that our browser, the information, is going to be right here, HTTP 1.1. So our browser is running HTTP version 1.1. And if we look at our server, we can see it's running 1.1 as well. Now we're asked what languages, if any, do the do your browser indicate that it can accept to the server? So we're going to go into our browser up here. We can see that our, our accepted language is en-us, en, and these others as well. We're asked what is the IP of our computer? It's going to be this test one right here. We have the IP of our server, 
and it's going to be this one right here, our source. But originally we have our source here, which is us, and the destination there. Next we're asked what is the status code returned from the server to our browser. So the status code, if we look at here, it's from the server back to us. We can see that after the HTTP-1.1, we're gonna have a 200. And that is the hypertext transfer protocol. Next we have, when was the HTML file that are interested in last modified by our server? So doing the same process as what we've done previously, we're gonna look at last modified here. And it says um, from the server to, or this the previous one says server to a browser. This one says last modified by the server. So this one's also looking at the server, meaning it's going to be this one here. And we can see our last modified was this right here. Now it differs from what we have here, but that's just because I'm recording this at a later date. Next we have how many bytes of content are being returned to our browser. So doing the exact same process, what we're going to do is we're going to, it says return to the browser, that means we're starting, our source is going to be the server, right? So if we look down here, we're gonna look at our content length because it's asking us how many bytes of content are being returned to the browser. And so that means our content length is just gonna be the 128 bytes of content. Now we have by inspecting the raw data in the packet content window, do we see any headers with data that are represented in the packet listing window? If so, name one. And I am not sure about this. I'm not 100% sure. Or I should say no differing headers are displayed in the packet window if there are any, because I am not sure. So just rewording that to make it a little bit more co coherent. Next video, we're going to be looking at part two, which is the HTTP conditional get, which is the response interaction.